depressed about our show getting canceled, so we thought we'd cover a subject that will make you even more depressed, the opioid epidemic. That's right, it's time for our last nightly show, Super Depressing Deep Dive. Take a look. Hi, hey, you good? Not for long. Welcome to another nightly show, Super Depressing Deep Dive. Opioids, everyone's talking about them. One of the greatest public health crises of our time, the opioid epidemic. An epidemic of drug abuse. We are seeing more people killed because of opioid overdose than traffic accidents. So how did this happen? It starts with pain. People hate pain, mainly because it's painful, and opioids take that pain and turn it into magic body warmth. Opioids are any opium-like compound, like morphine, invented in 1827 and advertised to children. Yes, that baby won't cry. Well, until you take away its sweet, sweet morphine. In 1888, Bear tried to make a less addictive morphine called heroin. Now, selling legal heroin may sound crazy, but this is during the time when you could get cocaine and Coca-Cola, and doctors thought your skull shape determined how smart you were. Phrenology. In the 1970s and 80s, most doctors avoided opioids as long-term pain relief because of the whole addiction thing. But in 1995, Purdue Pharmaceuticals, sadly not a branch of Purdue Chicken, marketed the safest opioid of all. Oxycontin, Oxycontin. And everyone was happy and pain-free forever. The end. JK, pain is life. It will never go away. Like you too, and Guy Fieri. Woo! And hey, turns out Oxycontin is crazy addictive, but to make it seem mega awesome, Purdue handed out branded promotional items like fishing hats and CDs. Yes, that's the title. It isn't even clever like Oxycontin I Joe. There were also plush toys, which we couldn't find images of, so we assumed they look like this. Hurt me! I can't feel pain! Or mark. And to help ease everyone's fear of addiction, Purdue created videos with super trustworthy dudes. They don't wear out, they go on working, they do not have serious medical side effects. Thank you, kindly doctor type guy who was totally not paid to say that. I bet he was paid to say that. A year later, opioid prescriptions jumped by 11 million. Those are some Viagra level numbers, but without the ads that make you think of your parents doing it. Wait. Sales of Oxycontin went from 44 million in 1996. Triple decker yacht money. To 1.5 billion in 2002. By 2012, doctors wrote more than 259 million prescriptions for opioids, enough to give a bottle to every adult in America. You don't have to be a chicken scientist to know that when everyone's got opioids, opioid overdoses are going to skyrocket. More than 165,000 people have died of causes related to painkiller use since 1999, including the men who love to party like it's 1999. Ugh. Tests show the music icon Prince died of an opioid overdose. That's right, those greedy drug company bastards mother killed mother Prince. Jesus Or maybe the drug companies didn't know. Maybe they were innocent pawns in this game of chance we call life. I'm just playing. Of course they knew. The LA Times reported that Purdue marketed Oxycontin as a 12-hour drug when they knew it often only worked for eight, leading patients to experience withdrawal and want higher, more dangerous doses, which means we were lied to by kindly CD hat doctor type guy. They do not have serious medical side effects. What the f dude? They hid the evidence of illegal oxy rings, and in 2007, they lost a $635 million lawsuit, and three executives pleaded guilty in misbranding the drug and downplaying the risk of addiction. Even Big Tobacco was like, damn, you guys are scumbags. That lawsuit was nine years ago, but we're only addressing this crisis now. Why? For the first time in any first world country, the death rate for white middle-aged people is on the rise. Yep, opioids became a national epidemic because it became a white people problem. Ba, 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 ba. Hashtag it. Now hospitals and doctors feel super bad about hurting white people, so they're cracking down on overprescribing and abuse. So, is it all better? Yeah. Wait, no. Because when addicts stop getting opioids, they turn to the next best thing. That's right, our old friend heroin is back. It's like opioid fast food. Cheap, easy, and its colorful mascots will haunt your nightmares for eternity. So now there's a new white people problem. The Nantucket Polo Club is full of heroin addicts. And if that wasn't fun enough, Big Pharma still makes billions of our pain by selling opioids. And we still don't have an effective, non-addictive, chronic pain medication. Now we just have heroin killing more people than ever. Depressed? Good. Then my job here is done. This has been another nightly show, Super Depressing Deep Dive. So much